Who is this patient and why did they decide to do this, Tom? Uh, we're not talking too much about the patient, Emily, out of uh, his respect for privacy, but I can say it's a patient that has a severe um, paralysis due to ALS and he uh, is not able to use his hands, he's not able to speak and he depends on assistive technologies to communicate with his family and friends and he's looking for a way to improve that capability. So how will this implant help him? The concept with a BCI is essentially the idea that we have become dependent on digital devices to engage with the world. That there's a part of the brain that controls our fingers. We use our fingers to do point and click. And if we can go straight to the source in the brain that controls the intention to do point and click, put a sensor in there, you can decode the information out of the brain and then control point and click without the need for your hands to do that. It comes directly from the brain. What are you hoping to learn from this patient's experience? This has been a long journey. The, uh, we became the first company to get a IDE approval from the FDA to conduct a study of a permanently implanted BCI. We're still primarily focused on safety, but we're now starting to test out the how we measure efficacy. So the FDA has publicly stated that it's not obvious how we would quantify the effectiveness of a BCI, and we're starting to test out some of those parameters with a view towards preparing that packet for FDA approval and then going to commercial launch. Now, as I understand it, your technology is ahead of what Elon Musk has accomplished so far at Neuralink. How, how much farther ahead and how is what you're trying to do different than what he is trying to do? I would say we're at the beginning of a renaissance of, of brain science, and I think this is going to be a huge problem that's solved for many, many patients. So there are many ways to try to solve the problem. The way that we're doing it is going into the brain through the blood vessels. We're on a particular path with FDA, and we've been able to leverage decades of knowledge around safety of leaving devices in blood vessels um, and the way that we can expect the body to react to that. So. It's a different approach. Um, it's a big problem, and I think there are going to be many approaches needed, but uh, we're excited to be finally getting into the clinical stage in the US after you know, uh, five years of discussion with FDA and demonstration of safety and testing of our, of our technology. So who do you imagine will be doing this in the nearer term future and in the longer term future? Is this something that you see anyone opting to do? Well, I think paralysis is a massive problem. We probably all know someone who's lost the ability to use their hands. Stroke, spinal cord injury, ALS, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Um, many conditions make our body ineffective while our brain is still working. So our big focus is to show that this technology is effective for, the, for a patient population initially. And I think the way I think about where this technology is going, it's going to be something like LASIK. It's an elective procedure. It helps you engage with technology more. You reconnect with the world. You overcome physical disabilities and you reestablish a digital, um, a digital, your digital world. So you think that in the future, putting a device inside your brain will be as easy and simple and desirable as getting LASIK eye surgery? Well, LASIK eye surgery is a minor procedure, it's still a laser on your eyeball. It comes with risk and it takes a couple of hours. It's in a day procedure unit. That's the type of physicians that are putting in stents and pacemakers are using the same technology that would be putting in a brain computer interface if it goes through the blood vessels. So that's a cath lab and they are thousands of them across the country with many, many physicians who can perform the procedure. It's a day procedure. It's invisible to the outside world and it helps you reconnect and it offsets our, you know, all of the things that come with a, with a human body that can fail for a number of reasons. 